Roswell, New Mexico is a sci-fi drama series on the CW that first premiered in 2019. Though it's based on the Roswell High book series by Melinda Metz and draws elements from the 1999 TV adaptation starring Sherry Appleby, it's not a pure remake of either. The main divergence is that the newer series jumps 10 years into the characters' futures while reimagining much of their backstory and abilities. Already in its final season, we're jumping in to talk about episode 11, Follow You Down, and give our review. Welcome to today's episode. Do you remember the last alien show that we've done? Oh, well, do you count I Am Groot as one? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll count I Am Groot. But you can also count She-Hulk. Or the Orville. Yeah. I'm thinking more along those lines. <laughs> like the Spaceships, lines. Okay. stuff like that. Not, yeah. not superhero shows. Mm-hmm. But anything about, like, crash landing aliens. I would only think Raised by Wolves. The man who fell to Earth. Oh, um, yeah, that's true. Yeah. He also lands close to, I don't, he may land in New Mexico just not in Roswell. Yeah, I think it was like Santa Fe, right? Or something like that. That would make sense. Yeah. yeah. So I will tell you a few facts before we begin our review. First of all, season three and season four of this show were picked up together. So mm-hmm. they've been in the works for over a year now. All the titles of the episodes are 90s songs. So Follow You Down, the name of this episode, was a 1996 Gin Blossom song that actually hit number nine on the top 100 at the time and was on the uh, list for like 46 weeks straight. And then this show was actually canceled before season four started to air. Wait, so they picked it up for season three and four and then they canceled it after season three? Yes, before it started to air, but after they had already filmed. So the chances that it ends conclusively are a little slimmer than if they had known. I was gonna, how many episodes are supposed to be in this season? 13, you watched the pre-penultimate episode. Right, I was going to say that like, there's a lot of stuff that they're going to have to clear up if this is supposed to be like the final season. Yes, it's the the final couple episodes. I was hoping you were going to tell me there were a lot of answers, a lot of things that felt like they were cohesively coming together. No, I, I knew that Roswell, New Mexico had something to do with aliens, but that's all I knew. But this apparently just like blew everything out of the waters. People have like powers in this show. People are aliens. You need fruit to open different type of portals people are like branded and can there's a lot of like tokens transfer their powers yeah it was crazier than i was ever expecting this show to be and i tried to do a bit of a crash course and that just meant that for season four at least i got the recaps to every single episode okay so you know what's happened sped through that yeah to kind of get a sense otherwise i feel like it would be kind of unfair to just sit here (laughs) very confused i had i think at one point seen maybe an episode or two of the original series at some time in the past but that was well before this show was even green light Um, It came around in the first two seasons, they kind of redefined the main characters, the main characters being Liz, Max, Michael, Isabel, and then they started implementing kind of new people. Um, Rosa isn't new, is she? Rosa, as the sister, was not, I don't think, in the original series, but she was in the books. Oh, okay. So what happens with Rosa in the first season of this show is that she was dead. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, she was dead. She had died 10 years previously in a car accident um, because she was like high at the time. And then they bring her back at the end of the first season. You recognize yeah, Rosa. Okay, yeah, obviously. Right the off the bat. From, yeah, the person from Prey and Legion as Amber well. Amber Mid Thunder. Yeah, yep. that's an awesome last name. But yeah, Legion, Prey, like you said. And, not, and that wasn't the only person I recognized. I also recognized Kyle, who played Tyler in the Vampire Diaries series. Okay, so yeah, he's the doctor in this show. He also has an it will they won't they with Isabel, right? Yes. And yeah. then uh and yeah, isn't he super old now? Wouldn't he be? Yeah, Vampire, that's what that was my thought. Vampire like, Diaries was like two thousand nine ish. Yeah. But before we jump into the rest of the cast, I do want to just concentrate on Amber Mid Thunder for one more second because she was filming prey in the middle of this season so she wasn't in a lot of this season she's in the last few episodes here but her absence was noted so was a different character that we'll get to in a second did you recognize amber mid thunder besides from legion but also from banshee because i know you used to watch banshee i did watch banshee no i didn't know that she was even in it she was in there for like two episodes i think one of the earlier seasons yeah, and, I they her off. and then she was also in hell or high water but really i didn't even know that either 
I think she's got the most momentum coming out of this show as of anybody in the cast. But then, yeah, so Alex is the other person who kind of disappeared for half the season, and I think this is his return. Yeah, this is his return, and I, I knew it right away. Like, when they took off his mask, I was like, okay, this guy had to have been gone for a couple episodes because they made it, like, such a big deal that he was back. I think he's been gone since, like, episode one or two of the season. Tyler Blackburn, and from what I understand, he was struggling with both, like, a physical issue, which then also turned into sort of a mental issue because it was like, this is taking forever to heal or whatever. So now that he's back, though, he's going to be in there for the rest of the season. And he plays a pretty significant character because he has a relationship with the Michael character, right? Yep. And fans are really big on their relationship. They call them Maliks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, because Michael, Bonnie, and Dallas, they're all stuck in this, like, upside-down type of world. Yeah. It has no son. And, yeah, Michael— Well, they're like, in the quicksand. Yeah, well, do you understand oh, the that's quicksand? what happened? Yeah, so okay. Alex gets trapped in the quicksand at the beginning of the season. Then he disappears. Right, People are like, what's going on? The portal, they find out that it's sort of an dim interdimensional portal to different places. And then Dallas and Bonnie end up going in after him or something. Right. And so now they're stuck. They now, showed the previously, yeah. and I saw them go down to quicksand. I was trying to figure out what the connection was. I was like, is this somehow a backflash? Because they do do a couple backflashes during the episode. But yeah, no, okay. So that was just a portal. So coming in completely blind, what would you have thought about this? You were just like, oh, just complete sci-fi everywhere you're looking? I mean, for the most part, but it wasn't like the cool Marvel sci-fi that you're used to. It was like... It wasn't like, what's that really bad show that... Or really low budget show that you did? The one starts with a P. Okay, yeah. Pen it's not Pandora? Pandora? No, it's not like that. It's not like Age of the Living Dead. And it's not like so bad that's good like La Brea either. This is so it's like a double edged sword in that sense because it's like okay. is it just classic CW? Like, yes, yes. When people say quote unquote CW show, this is exactly what they're talking except about. Except aged up a little bit because these people are in their thirties, and I know that sometimes you do get thirties playing teenagers, but they're not supposed to be teenagers. Yeah. they're supposed to be like hitting thirty. But it's just the amount of sci fi that's in it. Okay, so you mentioned Bonnie. Bonnie was actually one of the villains at the beginning of the season with Clyde and Tesca. So last season they defeated a villain named Jones. Okay. Right? Okay, yeah. And uh, he was kind of like the in control of a huge base. He was like the Zod mm -hmm. uh, or how would I put this kind of like the Charles Manson. Like, yeah, he leads the cult of people. And so they came in there after he had been defeated coming in there to still finish off what he wanted right i think that clyde we i think we see jones at the beginning of the episode if it okay. wasn't jones it was tesca but yeah i i even thought it was a backflash because it's uh, right before the intro we see that clyde brands jones with a branding iron and he talks about how uh by doing this they're both going to be able to share the powers that he has and we've seen clyde throughout uh, the episode he has kind of killgrave's powers which i thought was cool because i always find killgrave as like an interesting villain oh killgrave is like mind oh that sounds like tesca <laughs> okay yeah go ahead yeah but yeah so then clyde like basically brands him and then that's what leads into the intro mm -hmm. and does then anybody does anybody's eyes change no, not okay. that I saw. All right. And then we see that Liz, the main character, she's in the restaurant. She's, like, scribbling down a ton of stuff on this kind of, like, chalkboard. Type she's thing. a mad scientist at this point. In the last couple episodes, she's taken a huge uh, infusion of this, like, mist. mist. Yeah, they keep on talking about this and mist. They did and this I was like, what is it? apparent Mindscape episode where they brought in the original Liz from the <laughs> 1999 series. The only episode that she's come in. Mm -hmm. She's directed, I think, one or two of them. But she comes in there and she has kind of a battle with her like whether or not to be empathetic liz like the normal liz or to just go kind of let this mind stuff take over and let her become a super scientist so right. that she can save the day and at the end of the battle she ends up caving and letting the super scientist take over and not all her friends know about it so they're kind of trying to figure out whether or not she's yeah they she's hold an Jekyll intervention for her. Her. Okay. literally <laughs> like in the first scene they they hold an intervention for her. like max is there rosa yeah. is there and they i think they do know about the mist because they're like you know you have to maybe just stop taking it uh, you're like kind of losing your mind and she blows them up off. Uh -huh. Then the show did a very interesting thing. So oh, like Rosa would know about it too because she had an addiction problem as a kid too. Oh, to the mist or just an, oh oh no, just because she was high when she died. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So Rosa and Liz they go upstairs and then uh, because Liz does say that she'll go to rehab. That was what the intervention was over. So there's an actual rehab facility that's going to take care of this specific think, problem, even though so. it's a drug that think, she's invented. I believe so. I think Max is like you have to go to rehab. I think they're just going to probably Alien do rehab. it for addiction. <laughs> yeah. Something 
anything like that. And Rosa is so happy. She's like, oh, I'm so glad that you decided to like try and get help with this thing. But Liz keeps on looking towards the closet door. And then Rosa is like, wait a second. And she goes <laughs> to the closet and just like searches around and finds a canister of the blue mist. Yeah. And then the, this is one of the interesting things. So the show cuts and I was like, all right, that's just a normal scene whatever we get like a quick scene where kyle and isabel are talking about their relationship and just how i think they had a romance thing going on but kyle's like look we should just stay friends and even though isabel doesn't want to just be friends she's like she just kind of plays it off in fact isabel was played by katherine heigl in the original series <laughs> okay does she did katherine heigl have an interesting thing with kyle um oh i don't remember that i don't even think that kyle was in the original oh, series okay. but he might have been yeah yeah so we had a couple other scenes i think we're even introduced at this point to bonnie dallas and michael and like i said michael is just trying to find alex because they lost him in this upside down type world did they tell you what bonnie's power was in this episode uh no she can like milk people's powers away from them she takes oh. people's powers she doesn't necessarily want to but it's sort of like that x-men character from who can like whenever you get close to them like mm-hmm. your powers drift away but i think she takes them forever Okay. So that way it reminds me of heroes. Yeah. A lot of people gaining right. powers in this show, a lot of people having their powers taken away. So right. that's very classic sci-fi. And Michael's like, you know what, you guys can do whatever you want, uh, but I'm going to go try and find Alex. Then we cut back His boyfriend, yeah. and suddenly we see that um that Liz is like with Clyde, the antagonist of the series. She's strapped to a chair, she's inside a cave, and I was like, wait, what just yeah what, what did, did just happen? what did just happen and then uh and we also see that rosa she's been knocked out uh, and max comes up to her and like wakes her up and she's like what happened and then rosa's like oh well liz must have hit me with a lamp and then like so there's all these questions and then 10 minutes after the first scene we see where rosa finds the canister of mist clyde comes in he has somehow brainwashed this character named vanessa um, I think that it's just one of their friends. And Vanessa knocks out Rosa and takes Liz and and I guess the blue mist. I think Vanessa and, was the girl who was with Isabel, but she might be brainwashed right now. I don't know. Yeah, no, she was brainwashed. That yeah. was another thing that Clyde was able to do. And he and then Clyde takes Liz and then leaves. But it was just such a strange you don't usually see that in TV shows where they go back to a scene that they originally cut from and then like answer questions but show you what happened afterwards. Did you like it? I mean, that was probably the most, I guess, creative part of the episode. Yeah, so the interesting thing about this episode is it actually has the absence of the character Maria, right? She's not in this episode, but she's actually Liz's best friend. So you'd think that she would have been there for the intervention. (laughs) The reason why she wasn't, though, is that she was really directing the episode. The person who plays her, Heather Hemmings. So she didn't want to direct and act? I think that's kind of to be expected when you do have to be behind the camera and seeing what's going on while also like, yeah, it'd be really hard to do both. I can understand Mm -hmm. that. But at the same time, fans were quick to point out that it seemed odd that she would not have played more part, especially since she also has sort of a power that is capable of helping out in these type of situations. <laughs> and so, from the recap, did you learn anything about some pods, apparently, that Max that's where they come from. looking through? Okay, that's where they come Their from. Their pods are, like, where they live, and then they pop out. Yeah, because Max, like, goes into, I think, what was Liz's old home or something, and he finds, the, like, these random pods that apparently are Liz's, but Shivani and other characters, like, look looking over them so at the beginning of the uh, season shivani uh basically recruited liz to help her try to find a cure for i think her daughter and under different pretenses like a cure for other things but then it ended up being also for her daughter and then that's where liz really beefs up her science knowledge she's already a biomedical researcher but she's like able to put everything together and that's where the mist gets loose and everything starts to happen that way and shivani and her kind of have a fallout after that okay so then shivani's daughter is still out there right that she's wants to cure but she's dead right so bringing her back from the dead though is kind of a no-no because that's what they did with rosa and it nearly killed max's character okay that makes a lot more sense with what happens later on in the episode the final scene specifically but yeah so i'll I'll go back to the upside down storyline what's happening there is that bonnie and dallas they get stuck inside a container they're trying to get out and then this reminded me of the first few minutes of arcane we see that there is a figure a man he's walking towards the canister with a mask and a gun and i was like is he going to like gun them down but no michael comes by just in time and takes off the mask and it turns out to be alex so that was his return oh they were reunited form and like they just immediately like fall into each other's arms or something (laughs) practically i mean that's what happens yeah Yeah, i've heard this episode is mostly about them yeah because bonnie and dallas have to again go find fruit to 
open up a portal, I think, to Oasis. I think that whenever anyone's talking about opening up a portal, There's I believe... different jewels in this. There's glasses in yeah. this. There's just random objects that have significance for helping them do different <laughs> missions. The, it was just so strange to hear Dallas, like, at the beginning of the episode, be like, you know, need to find fruit, an apple. fruit opens up the <laughs> portal. It was like, okay, it seems like they're kind of making these rules up as they go just along. Just to give <laughs> Alex and Michael more screen time together? Right, yeah. And so, okay. Michael, so what we learn is that Alex, apparently, the place that he's at has a lot of radiation and since bonnie and dallas and michael are all aliens it doesn't affect them but obviously affects alex himself yeah he's just an air force man yeah so no, he's human <laughs> so he shows his like chest and it's just filled completely like it's obviously already uh showing marks and there must be some time distillation too there because like or d- the diffraction or something because like he's been there for episodes upon episodes uh-huh. he'd be dead <laughs> if it was strong enough radiation it would he would have been dead really fast right yeah and alex is like you know i just want to spend my last few days with you and he proposes to michael right there and then on the spot like you get you got down on one knee. you didn't get down on one knee it was just like i want to marry you and then now it's funny because in the show like there's been three marriage proposals at this point i think uh liz and uh, max are planning to get married and i think isabel uh and vanessa were at one point <laughs> trying to get married so like yeah this is just a show that's not about love triangles as much as <laughs> as much as just people trying to get married and not being able to right yeah and so then uh it turns out that bonnie and dallas come back there's like there's no fruit from the tree but then alex is like come on let's get married michael because i want to spend my last few days with you <laughs> you know he tries to speed it up i was surprised how fast it happened i was like okay we're going at 100 miles an hour right yeah. here um and then coming back to the main storyline so apparently kyle and isabel they have powers as well and what they do is they join hands with rosa they're able to figure out exactly where liz is and uh clyde needed to get liz to use the mist because apparently since he's branded he can't open up the portal which is what he's trying to do yeah and he's so like, she's like the missing piece for him right and she and he's like i need you to find something that will like inject me with something so that i can actually go through the portal otherwise i'm screwed and then Liz is like why would i help you and then he's like because and this is where the kill grave comes in i brainwashed vanessa and vanessa is like at the top of a roof and even kyle and isabel could get there and are like so even though liz's empathy is supposed to be highly like doused right now it's supposed to be yeah. so pushed under everything else that she shouldn't feel it mm-hmm. like he's still trying to manipulate her with it does yeah. that make sense yeah like, no, 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 right no, now she is completely in that science brain why would she even care that vanessa's been well she wasn't in the science brain yet she he was I mean, like she was already misted like she's she still has the remnants of it in her head still yeah i thought that that was maybe she's going through withdrawal i don't know i think she is going through withdrawal okay but yeah, so she no. hadn't had it for enough time where it was starting to like ebb off right and okay, Clyde's like it. and vanessa is going to die if you don't do this and then like kyle and isabel even walk to the roof and are like come down and then vanessa's like i'm trying but i can't literally i'm screwed <laughs> You know, it reminds me a little bit of that Doctor Who, like, from a really long time ago, where everybody's blood type of a certain kind made them, like, step up to the uh, roofs of different buildings and almost jump (laughs) off. Go ahead. Yeah, so, but apparently it just took Kyle and Isabel using their powers to save Vanessa and also to join hands with Rosa and figure out where Liz is. They see a vision of what happened. That's where we get the answer as to why uh, Liz was caught by Clyde and and everything. And when you say join hands, you mean, like, Guardians of the Galaxy style. Like, people are actually holding hands. Yeah, they're literally holding hands to figure out where they are and then they that's how they know where liz is and um liz tries to make like a a, what you call poison injection type of thing Mm -hmm. um but then clyde tries it out on roses and the roses immediately just turn to he's wise to her yeah so he knows for a smart person she seems to be acting pretty cliche like especially (laughs) when it came down to her uh intervention where you decide like if you're super smart you're not going to be staring at the place that you know that they're probably going to (laughs) be looking at you to stare at yeah well liz also she like gets the axe and she hits the axe against the cave causing the cave to like cave in and it literally clyde gets just clobbered by the mountain oh so clyde is dead no but he doesn't die oh, okay, he's, he doesn't he's die. just underneath a ton of stuff and liz runs out and uh suddenly max and isabel i think are there yeah. and they save her she like faints right afterwards they go to a hospital she kind of forgives everyone and that's where we get the final scene where at the very end clyde has made it out of the cave but he shows up at shivani's place and is like look i need you to like give me some more of that mist and yeah so shivani is now working with him to right. probably save her daughter still yep that's exactly oh, what okay. it is <laughs> so they're teaming up to yeah yeah and that was the end of the episode
So it does seem like they're doing a lot of tropes in this show, yeah. from aliens with superpowers to the fear of losing powers to open secrets. Basically, everybody knows at this point that they're aliens. All of my all of my comparisons are just CW shows. I Zombie, Riverdale, parts of Gossip Girl, Pretty Little Flash, Liars, The OC, The Flash, Vampire Diaries. Now, the original person who developed the show and also left as showrunner, she actually worked on things like The Flash and stuff okay. beforehand. So that makes a lot of sense. One of my one of my pros was that Max sounds like Dean from supernatural he sounds exactly like jensen ackles every single line he said i was like this jensen ackles just close your eyes and that's it. yeah okay all right gotcha but as far as the relationship drama that's kind of where the show's undercurrent like lies yeah. so what did you think of that oh it was so melodramatic it was too so cheesy? yes way too cheesy i mean this show i know it doesn't have probably the biggest budget but it does not look realistic at but, all but where did the alex and michael thing end did are is he just still dying do we yeah. not get any no no, no. The, the, the very the last thing we see is Alex just wanting to get married to Michael right before he dies. So in the last two episodes, it's pretty clear that he'll be saved in some way. Probably, yeah. People are assuming that it's going to be via Liz's super brain. Yeah. Like that she'll just whip up something it to save someone like from radiation poisoning. A lot of the powers that the characters used were just deus ex machina. Like you would think the Vanessa thing would hold some serious weight, but like I said, Cal and Isabel just run up to the rooftop, use their powers, and Vanessa just walks off, doesn't walk off the ledge, like it's safe. Well, it yeah. is interesting in this series versus the original and also the books in the in the original they kind of had their superpowers just everybody had the same ones mm. because they were all aliens they all had the same or they were all the same type of aliens all from <laughs> oasis so they were able to use telepathy or healing it just depended on what situation they were in but in this they did make them power specific which yeah. does give your character more to work with if they're trying to identify with their power set. Yeah, no, like I said, I, I think that Clyde had the coolest power and I would want that power to like tell anyone to do anything or like even brainwash people. It sounds yeah. a lot like Tesca's power, but mm. the difference with Tesca over throughout the beginning part of the season is that she would like change people mm. like change their minds and and then she would also be able to shape shift into them oh okay yeah and then after she did that though it would leave like an imprint on their mind and kind of like eat away at it or something oh wow any theories on what these last two episodes could bring i have no i have no idea like i like i said it's just this seemed like they were making up the rules as they went along so mm -hmm. i assume that in episode 12 if there's gonna be 13 episodes maybe everyone makes it back for like a final fight for the finale but that's my only guess because they made jones's like overarching um plot such a big season part of this season and the fact that he was killed last season i feel like they regret killing him off <laughs> probably yeah but that's just how it came across to me what'd you give this episode i mean i don't want to hate on it too much because i know people like it and i just watched a random episode so i'll give it like a five out of ten because again it wasn't so bad it's good like la brea but it also wasn't just plain out awful like age of the living dead so, so you're st you're thinking a five is a kind review yeah <laughs> okay the show has a 77 on Rotten tomatoes a 6.2 on imdb mm -hmm. that's as a whole i'm not really willing to trust the individual episodes especially now because of the small audience and the amount of user reviews and the actual critics aren't going episode by episode anything else about this show though like resident alien is also another extraterrestrial show that we've done resident you, alien was better than this yeah because it's a comedy yeah. and it doesn't revolve this as sort of I mean, a soap opera yeah but this also is supposed to have comedic bits to it okay what was the funniest thing that happened the continual like talking of isabel and kyle and kyle continuously just being like no i just want to be friends with isabel and isabel's like sad face every single time he said that probably <laughs> was the best part <laughs> Okay, so it's funny how they just recruited his character from a different... Uh, there's other people who've been on the originals in this show. Um, the Max Evans guy, he was in the originals. And then also the uh, Andrew Lee guy who plays Clyde. They're both from that, but you recognize the guy from Vampire Diaries. Yeah. Also, Tyler Blackburn, who played the Alex Mays character, he's from Ravenswood, which was the Pretty Little Liars spinoff that we talked about in that episode right. when we did the Pretty Little Liars Original Sin podcast. But unless you got anything else to say, no, pros, cons, it. anything else? I'm probably not going to watch the rest of the series. All right. Well, thanks for listening. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.